what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're gonna be talking about megan in this video here today this will be the spoiler free review for megan it comes out this friday this thursday i guess uh the embargo is lifted i saw the movie tonight so again this will be my spoiler free review for the movie now megan is directed by gerard johnstone and i believe he's also being pinned by akila cooper who is pinning the upcoming second nun movie i believe as well uh it follows a brilliant toy company roboticist who, use, who uses artificial intelligence to develop megan a lifelike doll programmed to emotionally bond with her new newly orphaned niece but when the doll's programming works too well she becomes overprotective of her new friend with terrifying results now i will say this megan is a fun modernized cautionary tale about our attachments and over reliance on technology i will start off by saying that the film is starring allison williams it stars violet mcgraw who it also stars jenna davis uh, who is doing the voice of Megan and it stars Amy Donald who is just portraying Megan and some other individuals that you might be familiar with when you see the movie but yes it's a fun modernized cautionary tale about about our over attachments and over reliance on technology and how that's not very healthy as many of us probably know uh, some people may struggle I would say to connect with the characters but I found Gemma and Katie's dynamic to be a wonderful aspect that gave the story a lot of heart now Violet McGraw, Violet McGraw continues to be an outstanding young actor and I've enjoyed ev enjoyed everything I've seen from her I would say since I first experienced her I think with the haunting of hill house yeah the haunting of hill house she's been amazing in everything I've seen her in ever since I first stumbled onto her with that project and of course her, her sister if you didn't know this was featured in the black phone so those two siblings they are a wonderful pair of young actresses now she is starring in this film as Katie Gemma's niece who recently lost her parents and is struggling to cope with the loss as any nine-year-old would as highlighted in the trailer Trailers. Megan acts as an artificial source of comfort, which opens up a thought provoking aspect of this story while it commentates on artificial intelligence and the importance of not putting these connections over human connections. And how, especially if you're grieving, where those things that you latch onto that are not really human connections probably won't be the best way and it won't make you feel any better because it's not giving you what you're longing for, which is human connection, uh, especially if you're grieving the loss of a loved one. Now, McGraw is able to demonstrate Katie's grief wonderfully, which aids in making it easy to relate to her situation and the broken heart she wears for the first half of the movie or so. I would say that the movie is paced fine it's adequately paced but some parts do drag and i did find megan's antics to be the driving force behind keeping the film engaging anytime it did take a dip that's not to say that katie and Gemma's story is uninteresting but megan's insertion allows what we all came to see which is a dog gone wild Gemma is a skilled roboticist who has no experience of caring for a child didn't seem to be too close to her sister or her brother-in-law and williams is excelling at conveying the i don't know what the hell i'm doing nature of the character it's also nice to see the bond grow between these to over time and how Gemma becomes more comfortable in the motherly role and seeing uh, Williams depict these attributes as she continues to get closer to the character that McGraw is playing in Katie. The animatronics and the overall practical effects deserve nothing but the utmost praise. Shout out again to the actress who is, who is bringing the doll to life as well because you were amazing in the role. I would say the writing truly is strong in mostly regards to the themes of improper grieving, grief and loss in general, over-reliance on technology, and the story's execution just allows some inner self-reflection to occur for anybody that's watching that's living in the modern era, given that a lot of us are again are just like Gemma and Katie. I mean, not everyone is a roboticist like Gemma, but a majority of our species deal with technology day in and day out for the most part these days. So even if I can't relate to Gemma's occupation or Katie's tra traumatic experience, the story gives us two people who rely on technology to navigate life, to have fun, to uh, learn about the world, which automatically makes them interesting from the jump and allows us to think about our own experiences with technology. The growth, again, that these two experience over the course of the film is heartwarming and McGraw and Williams are very convincing as a aunt and niece pairing. Some plot threads in the writing, at, some plot threads in the writing that I would compare to uh, Dennis Nedry's betrayal in Jurassic Park are left unresolved. That could be the source of creating a franchise for them if they decide to explore that plot thread in another film. Megan doesn't take itself too seriously. It embraces its comedic nature, but retains genuine suspense and tension that are very unsettling at times. Now, the best example of this is when Katie gets attacked in the woods, as many of you have probably seen in the TV spots and in the trailer. Now, as far as the gore and the actual kills that are featured, a lot of them are off screen. 
and the sequences never seem to linger on the attack but quickly jump to the next sequence so saying it was held back by the pg-13 rating would be the best way to put it however gore doesn't instantly make it good the terror in this film i would say despite the kills being off screen for a majority of the kills the terror just would have been more rewarding if certain kills had been shown because the movie does a great job of just building genuine terror from the idea of what this doll is capable of and slowly witnessing it lose control or slowly witnessing the creator Gemma lose control over it because of all the smart attributes that it's equipped with and now the creator cannot control it and then of course the way the actress who is bringing the doll to life is delivering her dialogue and the mannerisms of the doll all of that is acting as a source of terror so even if you came for some gore even if you don't get that the movie definitely is able to still remain scary through other means because i never want to come off by making it seem as though gore is necessary to be to make the, or to keep the film scary because the film was scary without the gore i just would have found it to be more rewarding to finally see megan in action and see the results of what she's doing which you get brief glimpses of it but again the pg-13 rating is genuinely holding it back uh i will say this in totality this is nothing special by any means and the only new ground it's breaking is giving us an ai version of dolly dearest if you're familiar with that with better production value and a more competently made film i would say there's a fun soundtrack to go along with the madness and certain song choices for megan would immediately make you laugh or at least slightly chuckle i will say this is a fun movie honestly it's a fun movie it's a competently made short sweet to the point movie it doesn't have the worst writing it has some very thought-provoking aspects to the writing the themes that it's exploring are very interesting the characters are likable relatable uh so the side characters they're pretty much there to be just what they are side characters you're not going to really care one way or another what happens to them but they do make great additions to the overall narrative as it ties into our two primary characters that we focus on i guess three really megan Gemma, and katie in that dynamic of what's happening at home and i would say it is paying respects to a lot of the child's play lore certain elements in the movie kind of definitely seemed like they were nodding at the ending of the first child's play or any ending of a chucky movie that featured andy barkley in the early stages of the series but let me know what you guys think about the movie down in the comment section below if you have seen it if i had to rank it out of 10 i'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10 if you haven't already of course uh, again let me know down in the comment section if you enjoyed this movie or not if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and give a video in the description i will have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know there's any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video